Hey, it's Andrew Rams with ACR Commercial Roofing. This week, I'm gonna let you inside of a special training uh, that me and my team went through with one of our single ply roofing material manufacturers. Listen, there are all kinds of warranties in the commercial roofing space. In fact, I've seen a lot of property owners and contractors fall victim uh, to having a roof that they thought was covered for a specified period of time, but had some tiny fine print in them uh, that stopped the warranty from covering wind-related, hail-related, or other types of perils. So this week, it's important that I bring you in and allow the team that I work with to teach you a little bit about single ply warranties that are backed by the manufacturer, different lengths, different types, um, and how they can protect you and this information can protect your asset. So let's jump right in uh, to single ply warranty 101. It here versus uh, mechanical cash. It here is the blade here is adhesive, cab brick, body adhesive, uh, low rise foam. Uh, and mechanical cast is going to be screwing down. So glue it, glue it, or screw it. That's two ways to remember <laughs> glue it or screw it. Yeah, it doesn't sound too good. I always say, I always say fasten. <laughs> Yeah. I don't hear a lot of guys glue it just because of the wind and stuff. If you if you mechanically attach it, you're probably yeah. like, you talk about getting the ruffles up there. Yeah. Most building owners probably won't climb up on the roof, but mm -hmm. you got those guys that want to go there and look yeah. at their brand new beautiful roof mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my God, Andrew, my roof is blowing all over the place. What did you do? Yeah. It's supposed to do that. Right, right, right. <laughs> so. and, and that's the thing is that with an adhered system, it is, this is the original system. When single ply was introduced, all there was was a ballasted and adhered. Mechanical did not come into play till 19, I think it was 80, around 82. Uh, in addition, this is the coverage for, for the both of the systems, okay? When you're working with an adhered roof and you're, you're doing a 45 mil, as Bart mentioned, you're limited to 15 years, that's it, okay? And you can go no longer than 90 miles an hour wind speed for an adhered system. If you work with a 60 or 80, you can get 20 years with 60 mil. Now. If you're doing a 25 or 30 year and you're selling that owner that, the roof has to be torn down to the deck. But it also has to be the best preferred substrate. And there's four substrates Versico says that are the best. 22 gauge steel deck, 15, 30 seconds plywood, inch and a half wood planks, or structural concrete that met the PSI of 3,000. If your project has one of the four, then you can do a 25 or 30 year, okay? Now keep in mind is that when you're working with a 25 or 30 year roof system, it doesn't matter if it's an adhered or mechanical, there's going to be an additional things you have to do. You may have to increase your insulation will go from 20 to 25 PSI. The number of fasteners would increase. Details are going to be different. But again, it's like buying a vehicle. Do you want power windows or do you want road down? Okay, the, the, you get those advancements in that vehicle, hey, Nice, nice, a nice ride. A roof system's the same way, and I tell any owner, any architect, once you get into the higher warranties and your, your system is, as, as Bart mentioned, it's gonna be a beefier roof. Now, we do can go up to 120 miles an hour, and that's the max uh, warranty wind speed there, okay? That's not uplift pressures, that's totally different. That's a whole different animal. That's basically your, your standard wind speeds are 55 to 120. Now, when you're using 60 mil membrane, you can get on a here system up to one inch hail. Okay, but you have to make sure that that top cover board is adhered because you don't want to put down in a membrane and have plates underneath it. It has to be adhered. If you go into an 80 mil, you can go up to two inch. We even give you up to 16 man hours of accidental puncture every year. So if you know something happens on your project, you go up there and there's a hole up there and you fix it, tell the owner, hey, there's a damage there, but don't worry about it, it's covered. Oh, great, man, that's awesome, things like that. So a lot of owners, you know, love that. I mean, they love the fact that you can go up there and fix the roof throughout the year and still achieve that, be within that 16 hours, things like that. So keep that in mind on the adhered side. So if you see here, we can go up to 120. So you're basically taking your layers of insulation and you're mechanically fastening. Now I can sit here all day and talk about the number of fasteners. There's only three insulation boards, two inch, inch and a half, anything less than inch and a half. Two inches, eight fasteners per board, Inch and a half is 10 fasteners per board. Anything less than inch and a half will always be 16. But that's for the preferred substrates. If you called me up and said, hey, Dan, I'm going over this roof and I want to do a, you know, uh, an adhered system, first thing I'm going to ask you, well, what's your warranty? It's 20 years, 
55. What are you going over? Oh, it's going to be a modified, you know, over a jip, over a steel deck. What is that deck? I think it's 22 gauge. Well, you really have to make sure that it is 22 gauge, because if it is, and you're going to drop down an inch board, you can do 16, okay? But if you tell me, hey, I want to drop an inch and a half, just to have a little bit more buffer, then you can't do 10 if it's less than an inch and a half. Because we say if you have any decks that are less than the four, you're eight on a two inch, your inch and a half with 10 will have to all be 16. Because the weaker the deck, we need more fasteners, okay? A lot of that goes by when if Bart calls me or even if you contact me directly, that's why we encourage pull test on roofs that you're not sure of. Because I know from an inspector, I know a lot of roofs that don't have warranties. They only have membrane only because it didn't pass the pull test after they installed it. You know, for a mechanical fasten, I believe you're going to be up to around 425. Uh, pull test, when you get up to an adhered, you're probably about, uh, I think it's around three and a quarter, mm -hmm. if I remember right. So I have to look in the spec book because every deck is different on what it needs. So we have this, and this is the mechanical fasten. You know, you can see there 45, 15 year, 90. But what you notice here is that we do go up to 25 and 30 year. We only limit you to 100. Anything, anything higher than 50 feet, wind speeds, you're going to switch over to that. But also, too, if you notice, there's no hail because you're fastening the roof. Plates are exposed, as I would say to you guys. So kind of keep that in mind. See, and again, it's, it's, it's that. Because I get contractors asking, I want to provide hail on a mechanical. No, you can't. That's a whole different system that we can do, and that goes into fleece back, which is another system that we have, things like that, okay? When we're looking at the TPO side of the warranties and benefits, this is what you're looking at. You can go from a five to 30, 55 up to 120, and you have the hell damage and all that accidental puncture. And what's very unique is that online, we have this way, uh, a warranty matrix that for the reps, use, I use, things like that, but it breaks down what exactly what you can do on that roof. And it lets you know what you need to achieve that hell rating versus say the owner doesn't care about hell, they just want a high wind speed warranty, things like that, so. Also type of warranty mm -hmm. series, you also get a, just a material warranty, you know, just for buying the material, you have to go online and register. Mm -hmm. All that says is that we're guaranteed that the material is not faulty, that we produce right. it correctly. We're not warranting your, your labor, your workmanship or anything mm -hmm. like that. That's where the NDL comes in, since you guys are certified contractors, you can offer the NDL. Some of the, your competitors out there who are not certified with us cannot offer that. The best they can do is just a straight material warranty. Yeah, and, and only NDL warranties would get inspected. The inspectors that you may know, if you were to call them about a non-warranted, just ask them a question. Hey, what is this, can, can I do this on this roof? He may, he's gonna probably ask you, is that a warranted roof? And you say, no, he says, well, I, I can't, I can't. They, they, they can't answer those things. That's where we come into play. Because we can get on those non-warranted roofs even though you have a membrane warranty, but we can get up there and say, yeah, do it like this. The inspectors are typically just trained and engineered and designed to only focus on warranted prod or warranted systems. You can contact like him. You got a big project you're doing. He can do a job start with you. Mm -hmm. Go up there and make sure yeah. things kind of, you know, he can do a mid, mid project thing. And then as you know, because you've done the deals before, as you contact him, you file your copy B mm -hmm. and that notifies him, hey, we're ready for you to come out to inspect it. Yeah. And, and for those that don't know, the NDL warranty, no dollar warranty, um, that that essentially means that if we build it the way that they say it and we pay them for it, then it is they cover labor Everything. materials, the whole nine up to these um, time periods. So there's something valuable in that when you're talking to somebody like, yes, we, we want to tout ACR commercial roofing is, is financially strong, operationally strong, all these things. But we're not CCIM, is that it? Carlisle, we're not Carlisle yeah. Versico, where their balance sheet mm -hmm. has got X amount of dollars on it. So essentially what you're doing is saying, we're great and we're a good company, mm -hmm. but we're able to provide a manufacturer back warranty who's got far deeper pockets than us. Mm -hmm. So the theory there is, is if ACR for some reason stops doing business or we make so much money, we mm -hmm. decide to just quit. Well, they've got the backs of the owner. Okay. And we've had that too, you know, down the road, a contractor's gone out of business or he's left, he's doing something else. Well, the building owner calls mm -hmm. and said, hey, we've got a leak up here, it's five years on. 
They call us, say, well, he's out of business, can't get a hold of him. Who do you have in Lubbock who can go look at this resource? I'll contact Andrew and say, hey, we've got a uh, NDL situation, a warranty thing. Can you go out and inspect this roof for us? Then you actually kind of slide in there and take over the business board. We pay you to go out there and do that. Yeah. yeah. I will say this when it comes to specifications on our jobs, we build every roof as if there's a warranty on it and less noted. And that's very, very rare. Mm-hmm. I've noticed out here where you guys probably make a headway is that a lot of guys out here don't offer NDL work on, on negotiated work. They just get their own personal workmanship warranty. You know, this is you're backing up with the corporation. So that might be a good selling point. Yeah. You know, usually when you're going to have a major, you know, catastrophic failure, it's going to happen. I mean, from my experience, from being on the technical side and on the warranty side, investigating across the U.S., uh, it, it's, 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 it's about maybe 20% is probably roof for error. In all honesty, most of it is related to building components of some nature. But, you know, it's very important is that when you're doing these trainings, whether you have us come back in and talk to the men or even on the job site is understanding, you know, what what we need, like you mentioned, about what we need, because a leak's going to occur on a mechanical a lot faster than, than on adhered because everything is foamed down, as we would say, or, glue, you know, you know, glued down. So, yeah, it, it, it is. And, you know, it's it's a. We're, we're going to address it. The only thing is that, you know, we as a, as a company is that if a failure happens and say it's a wood nailer, you know, we don't, we always try to work with the owners as well to say, look, we know it's your fault, but we're going to come in here and help our roofer out. We'll provide this. Maybe you take care of that. Things like that. So there's a lot of negotiations, but we don't leave you hanging. That's what, that's what I would say. You know, I've seen some, I've seen some amazing roofs on the ground. You know, all you had to do is pick it up with a crane and put it back and attach it to the wood nailer and you'd have a roof back. Yeah, and it's just amazing, you know. But we're going to go and get into the PVC side. So again, this is sort of the warranties and benefits and it mimics what uh, TPO does. And, 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 you know, whenever I'm talking to anybody in technical and things like that, they're basically the same uh, install methods. The only thing that changes is, of course, the, the product, but you're adding more heat on PVC than you do TPO. TPO requires less heat, while PVC requires heat to melt that process together. So, but everything in the long run from the design aspect, you know, you have the same built up, warranty terms, hail, hail damage, things like that, and so on and so forth. Hey, I hope this video helped you, gave you a little bit deeper understanding about how single ply warranties work. Listen, if you enjoyed this and you need more information, make sure to check out the videos here. We've got tons of educational information circled around commercial roofing. We'll see you on the other side.